Hi here, Ben's here. I'm back for another video and yes, it's time for me to review about the semi-final two European 2019 results. Um, I know it's been like a month now since Eurovision, um, but yes, it's. I need to talk about it. Um, so I'm going to talk about it now. Yes, I'm going to review about uh, the results of the semi-final two Eurovision 2019 um, and my opinion if the juries or the televoters got them right. So, what were the results? So, let's start off with the overall result. So, uh, with no surprise, the Netherlands won the um, semi-final, coming in first. Then they're followed by North Macedonia finishing second. Get in there, Tamara Tvesky. <laughs> then followed by Sweden, Switzerland, Azerbaijan, uh, Russia, Norway, Malta, Albania, and squeezing in by just one point, getting in there by the skin of her teeth, was Leonora from Denmark getting um, that tenth and final qualifying position. So the eight countries um, that didn't qualify to the final were missing out by one point was Lithuania of all countries. Uh, they came eleventh, followed by Moldova, Romania, Croatia, Latvia, Armenia, Austria, and poor Sarah McTurin from Ireland finishing in the last spot. So let's, I'm going to talk about the top first. So, I mean, it's no surprise the Netherlands won the semi-final, um, because, you know, um, they were favourites to win, you know, everybody was predicting they were going to win the semi-final. But it was not like a runaway favourite, as many people might have thought, because actually, it was interesting enough, nor the jury or the televoters um, put them as their winner. They came second, the Netherlands came second in both the jury and the televotes. Uh, televotes. Um, the juries wanted North Macedonia to win the semi-final because they put them first. Um, but I have to say, North Macedonia, I say that's rightfully deserved. That, that North Macedonia did well in the um, uh, juries. I have to say, uh, well done Tamara Tafeski. That's like, I would say that's like, um, I think that's North... North slash FYR Macedonia's best ever result in a semi-final. I, I don't think, I don't think they've ever like come that high in a semi-final. I'm mistaken. Um, I I think that that's right. Um, so Woda North Macedonia. It came seventh though, um, in the public vote. But still, it would have still qualified to the final. So it's a win-win situation. Um, but it was interesting enough with the televote, um, Norway won the televote, um, coming in first. That's interesting. Um, I mean, it was so Eurovision and loved, I mean, the yoking, um, and, you know, it was a good pop song at the end of the day, and I think really people got behind it, and when I watch it back now, I can always hear, uh, the, the crowd in the arena singing along and clapping along with it, so it was really popular. Um, but no, but I would say that's very unexpected that Norway did win the Tevo because, yeah, I mean, we all thought Netherlands would, but no, Norway, good on Norway. But what's interesting is, uh, with the juries completely disagreed because they would have finished 11th, um, in the juries with Norway, putting them out of the top 10, um, and out of the final, um. I mean, I kind of predict that. I had a funny feeling that the juries might play around with Norway and not put that through, because that's not really... I don't know, I think it's not really... Because, you know, some juries do get embarrassed about if they put that kind of song behind... put their name with that song, that would be judged. But, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it's Eurovision. Like, have some fun with it, you know? It's a serious competition at the end of the day, you know, it, it was a good song, why would you feel embarrassed to put your name behind it, I mean, yeah. Um, so going, 
Right. Um, another country um, the juries would have took out was Albania. Um, so it would be Norway and Albania the juries would have um, taken out the final. And they would have taken in um, Moldova and Romania in their top ten. Albania surprises me. I really thought Albania was uh, more of a jury-friendly song than a televote song. Um, I really thought juries would respect um, John, John Dean, I can't keep remembering her name, John, John Dina Malici's vocal ability. Um, and it was also the only non, the f only fluid non-English song in that semi-final. Maybe they also judged it on the staging, because I do think if they had better staging, maybe it could have been elevated higher. But thank goodness the televoters saved that song, because I was really happy when that qualified. Moldova would have qualified if it was 100th century. I'm kind of against that, actually. Um, I mean, they are expected uh, vocal ability, um, but it is such a dated song. Stay another day, we'd be here forever together, whatever the lyrics were. It's just cliche, and I mean, the Sand Lady did elevate the song, I'll give it that. Moldova did. I mean, they had an idea, I mean, they really needed that Sand Lady, but I just think there was a lost connection. It just wouldn't connect with the song and the staging, because I just felt like with the singer and the Sand Lady, it didn't connect, unlike Ukraine 2011, it did connect, kind of. Um, yeah. Um, happy to have only didn't put that through. Romania, on the other hand, I understand why the juries put that in the top ten, and rightfully so. Romania deserved to be in that final. Um, what's interesting, the televote only put Romania 14th, which I'm quite surprised because I really thought Romania would have done much better, um, so they came 13th. I'm really surprised about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been looking back at all the performances now and seeing what went wrong with Romania, because that was a big shock for me when that didn't qualify, because I really thought there was a certain lock into the final. I mean, I've been looking back to see what happened, why did not people vote for this song? And I, and I think the problem was with Romania is that maybe it was more of a grower than a shower, um, because when I first listened to it, I thought, oh gosh, what is Romania sending to Eurovision? But then as time went on, I, I, it really grew on me, and I really thought it was going to be a certain lock. So maybe that was the problem with Romania. It was a grower than a shower. I mean, the staging was flawless, um, but maybe the song was a grower than a shower. Um, but saying all that, I am still surprised it did not make the final, because I really thought it deserved to be in the final. And it did not deserve to be Romania's worst ever result, ever. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still surprised, really. Um, um, but yes. Um, now, who the televoters would have put through. Now, this is definitely an interesting one. I keep saying interesting a lot. Um, they would have put Lithuania through to the final and took out Denmark. Um, Surprises me because I really thought Denmark would be more of a televoting, televoters song than a jury song. It's another one that I really thought would be um, the other way around. Um, I mean, to be fair, I mean I wasn't a big fan of. So they would. So basically, Lithuania missed out on the final by one point. Um, but to be fair, I actually, although I wasn't a big fan of Denmark's song this year. I mean, I would have preferred Denmark to qualify than Lithuania, because at least with Denmark, is there was a, there was staging, there was an atmosphere. Um, with Lithuania, it's just a guy from Lithuania singing with a microphone, with, with with kind of no staging really. Because I'm quite surprised Lithuania did actually better than I expected. I mean, that must be just the diaspora really helped Lithuania go twelve from. Points from the Irish Televo, twelve points from the uh, uh, for the UK Televo. I'm quite surprised it did that well with all these countries. And is it just diaspora? I, I, it's very curious for me because I really thought it wouldn't do so well. But I mean, it was a nice song. But I'm surprised people, more people, voted for Lithuania than Denmark, um, and that's saying a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah. 
so I uh, let's talk about um, the bottom. I have to talk about Ireland. Ireland, what happened? I mean, that came last with only 16 points. It didn't even get 22 points. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, the jury's put it last with 13 and the uh, public put it second to last um, with only three points. So in the end, it only got 16. I don't get that. I really wanted to do that song to do better. I mean, I could understand if it, it it didn't qualify. I can understand if it finished like 12th, 13th, or 14th in the semi final. But last, last place, I, I don't understand that. I thought that was a good song, had good staging, um, good singer. Sarah had a nice personality to her. A lot of people say, oh, she was on second, so maybe that's why she didn't do as well. But no, Nathan Trent from Austria 2017 also performed in the second position in the semi-final. And he's qualified, so I, I, I don't understand. I mean, I can understand it not qualifying, but it to become go last. I mean, I think there were songs, it was better than most of the, some other songs. I mean, Latvia got 50 points. I mean, I mean... It was better than Latvia, Lithuania, Croatia, Moldova even, like, yeah, oh, I mean, I mean, good for Ireland for taking a risk, you know, it wasn't a ballad, it was an upbeat tempo kind of song, um, it was a nice change of pace for Ireland, it's just, it was, it was so nice, and you know, it was so nice to see something different from Ireland, and it came last, and... Oh, I mean, I could make a, a whole video about it, but let me talk about Austria as well. 21 points from the juries, but nil poir, zero, a big fat zero in the televoters. I mean, mm, I was hoping they would do a bit better um, than zero, but... Mm, I mean... To be fair, I mean, it was nice staging. I like Panda's blue hair. I mean, I just think the song with limits is the problem was it had a bit of limits to it. I think maybe if I've heard some of Panda's music, maybe if she should have sent a more pop song, upbeat song to the contest, maybe she would have qualified. I think the problem limits it just, I don't know. It just didn't connect to most people. I think that was the problem. Uh, maybe it came a bit squeaky. Squeak, squeak, squeechy. I can't say the word. Um, like da -da, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, there were parts in that song I didn't really like. Uh, but Armenia came sixteenth. That's their sixteenth. Very low for Armenia. Uh, that's their worst ever result. Even worse than last year. Uh, what happened to Armenia? I think the problem was um, with Armenia is it wasn't a bad song. A uh, Sabuk so could sing. You give it that. Um, I think the problem was it was on first, and it was quite dark star. I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't put that on first, me personally. Um, and also, um, I think her diction wasn't that good. I mean, I was struggling if to, if I couldn't know, I didn't know if she was singing in English or Armenian. Um, so maybe her diction could have been a bit better. Um, and maybe she came across a little bit aggressive for some people. Um, but it was a shame, because it was a good song, it had potential, but it just didn't live on the night, unfortunately. But anyway, that was the second semi-final. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, like this video, subscribe. Thank you so much, and comment down below what you think about the semi-final two Euro 2019 results. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye!